Skyforge is a really fun, action-packed, full-on PC MMO that is extremely enjoyable on the surface, but is held back by its lack of polish and the undeniable, overwhelming feeling you're playing a really overdeveloped mobile game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Tripe-Hayes, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMOs I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff, ring the bell for all the future notifications, and as usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. I don't care how small the text gets, I'm keeping all your names on one page. More on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. Today we are playing Skyforge. Now remember, this series is called Worst MMO Ever, but they're not all irredeemably bad. In fact, Skyforge was downright fun for a few hours I spent with it, but it's not without flaws, and that's what I'm going to focus on. And this gets pedantic, because honestly, Skyforge feels so close to being awesome. It's just ruined by some absolutely unforgivable amateur-level mistakes. So Skyforge, it's on Steam and it's free, and wow, the top reviews do not paint this game in a favourable light. We will come back to these later. Skyforge is published by My.Games, so I checked them out and, oh, a sci-fi shooter called Warface. A fantasy MMO, Conqueror's Blade, the eastern-looking revelation online. I see, I think me and My.Games are going to get to know each other very well over the next few weeks. So I launch Skyforge and we face the first issue. Resizing the game doesn't. The first screen you get is a calibration screen and while you can select windowed full screen, it doesn't actually make it windowed full screen. It stays full screen full screen. What a great start. Make a character. And if you're thinking, that looks a bit pixelated around the edges, that's because it is. I don't know why. Textures are lovely, edges aren't. I've got anti-aliasing on, it doesn't do anything. Oh, and you can have a mask on. This seems era appropriate. Here's a strange bug. You can use this slider to change your character's run style from light to heavy, but when you slide it all the way to heavy, the camera zooms into the model's face. Why? I'm not affecting the face, I'm changing the gait. I want to see the whole model so I can see what the run animation looks like. This happens with a few other sliders too. Have you just used these sliders with the pre-programming of changing something on the face parameter so it still just zooms into the face? Game starts. We're a soldier on a train. We're on our way to kill some bugs and we get told very directly, be careful, you are not immortal. Remember this line, it will be important later. WASD movement, space is jump, the UI is clean, the graphics look fine, the movement feels good, lighting is consistent, ambient audio fits. Okay, everything looks good, so we head over to this sergeant, press spacebar to talk, and now the minor yet jarring problems begin. The game is voiced, mostly, but the voice acting does not match the subtitles. Look, I I know this Sir, isn't game-breaking. What it is, is immersion-breaking. This is a really common design fault in a lot of Eastern games translated over to the West. They care enough to subtitle, they care enough to voice act, but Can't they don't care before. enough to match them up. It's a signifier the company has talent and skill enough to make a high-quality game, and money enough to avoid voice actors, but not the patience or care to make sure they've actually polished it together. And we will see this lack of polish throughout. I hang around to admire the scenery and and the light rays and it looks awesome and then the game actually shouts at me for wasting time. I actually like this. It adds a sense of connection between the player and the avatar. Your actions are being observed and reacted to by the NPCs in the game. Now to combat, which is the main part of this game. Skyforge is an action MMO. Left click for basic attack, right click for a larger AoE sword swipe. Shift is dodge and you'll gain more abilities as you level up. Hits feel nice, good visual flair and sound effects on impact, but the occasional animation snapping and somewhat slow responses on changing direction. It's a really sharp combat system with occasional interrupts and half second input lag. Not enough to make it unplayable, but enough to occasionally be noticeable. This town dude is also voice acted and right, the voice Voice acting in this game is interesting. Just, just have a listen. Th th thank you. I thought they'd tear me apart. When the creatures started coming in, everybody panicked. People screamed, and I ran. The headman told us to go to the barn and barricade ourselves in. And I, I fell behind when I went to get something from my house. 
Some of the voice acting is great, but most of it is bad. Very bad. Don't worry, we'll hear some really, really bad stuff later. Kill some mobs, then have a nice little cutscene and fight the first mini-boss. Now, while fighting, you'll see orbs fly off the enemy. These refill your health and are somewhat important in the later game. They also mean the best way to restore your health is by attacking, so it's promoting aggressive gameplay, which is a great way to encourage the player to engage in combat. It's what the reboot of Doom did. Killing the mini-boss gets us another cutscene. We rescue some people and then get thanked by all of them. And look, when I say the voice acting is laughable this is the kind of thing I'm talking about hey over there you can come out come out it's safe now thank the gods you got them all thank you thank you you're our saviors we're saved thank you thank you so much we thought it was the end of us Despite winning the fight, we are ambushed and the next cutscene is actually quite nice. Visuals are decent, music is good, fight direction is lovely. Skyforge feels like a high budget game made with a low budget attitude. Oh, and in this cutscene, we die. Like, we just get straight up murdered. But that's not a problem, because we are subverting the expectation of the earlier intro movie, actually immortal. And then we're treated to a great cutscene and, okay, just watch, I've not edited this. Arise. Immortal. It is not the end. It is just the beginning. Did you feel that? That jarring switch from cutscene to gameplay. The music was rising, the camera was zooming in, the emotional intensity was building, and then it was just... gone. Skyforge is good at cutscenes, it's good at gameplay, and it's awful at transitioning between the two. Fight our way through the hidden temple we appear to be in, I'm enjoying the visuals and the combat, and then another cutscene. Okay, this has happened twice, and now it's annoyed me. This is the second cutscene we've been overwhelmed by enemies. Why don't you just actually overwhelm me with enemies in gameplay? Cutscenes are used to show events you couldn't show via gameplay or wouldn't make any sense. If you want to have the player feel truly helpless, just throw an actual mass of enemies at me and kill me. I want to fight what you are showing me. But with the cutscene done, we are now back to some one-on-one -on -one with a random dude. I wonder if I can win by just spamming left click and doing absolutely nothing else. Yes, you can. This is not a well-designed encounter. I talked to this dude. He's meant to be impressed we're an immortal, but I don't think anyone has told his voice actor he needs to act impressed. Birds thought you were dead. Couldn't they smell you? And you don't have a scratch on you. You must be immortal. You were born under a lucky star. Come on, it's my duty to bring you to Alien R now. Being an immortal, we are sent to the main city, which is a lovely sci-fi flying cars all in nice lines, huge towers of glass and silver style futuristic city, your standard city in the clouds look. And here we meet Harida, who gives us a massive exposition dump through text. This is a remarkably lazy, very amateur way of advancing the story. Don't show or have the player experience, just tell them what they need to know and how they should feel. Basically, we are an immortal, but not a god. Not yet, but if we work really hard and help people, we could become a god. And that's the whole plot of Skyforge. We are sent to meet Flavius, a god who is devoted to science, and also the only voice actor who can actually emote. A rookie. Hello. Liking immortality? Not getting to your head? Oh, my manners. I'm Flavius. I'm trying to advance science here while others are waving their swords. We're now sent to the training hall to choose a class and the terms and conditions box pops up. What? I thought I'd already accepted these, but no, apparently you accept the T's and C's of the game now. This is the class hall, and I feel like I'm back in Otherland. Is this 8 squared? Are we about to be ambushed by shaders? 
So in Skyforge, you've got a load of classes and you can switch between them once you've unlocked them all. There are three free classes, a tank, a DPS and a healer, and a wealth of premium ones covering all combat styles. There's loads of choice if you're willing to pay for it, and don't you worry, we will look at the shop later. I go with the Cryomancer, an Ice Wizard DPS, and just to cement this game's similarities to Terra, the wizard uses a floating disc focus weapon, exactly like Terra. Now begins a combat tutorial, and here is my issue with this. This combat tutorial explains an attack, spawns some enemies, and makes you use the attack. Technically, it's ticking all the boxes of a good tutorial, explaining an ability, then putting you in a position needing the ability. But it's missing the emotional impact of using the ability to achieve something. This tutorial is technically correct and emotionally void. Here's an example of a better one. In Warframe, you are trapped, alone, and being hunted. You are shown how to bullet jump, and you use it to escape. You're shown how to melee fight, and you fight your way to safety. You're shown how to shoot, and you defend yourselves from enemies. The tutorial takes place within the actual story of the game, and you feel connected to the actions because you need to use them to survive. This tutorial takes place in a white training dojo. You're told to use the bomb, you use the bomb. You're told to use the spike, you use the spike. You're shown a shield, you use your shield. It's an extremely basic basic derivative training section, and you are never in any danger. It's linear and dull, and it remains that way right up until the end when suddenly there's actually quite a nice subversion of expectations. It doesn't make up for the lack of interest in the tutorial, but it does definitely do something with it. The training simulation now breaks, and suddenly you have to use what you've been shown to actually survive as the dummies become hostile. Nice way to turn it around, Skyforge. Set up for a payoff. Well done. But this does also mean the simulation has glitched, which makes it even more like Otherland. To survive this massive wave of enemies, we're given temporary god powers, a little taste of what we'll have later, and it's fun mowing down hordes of enemies who only moments ago were actually an issue to us. So the weapon you use changes based on your class, but every other item remains, so you don't need loads of class gear sets. Keeps builds nice and simple. One small issue with the world map, it's lacking any real detail. The minimap shows NPCs you can talk to, and quests, and other players, and the world map just shows the area you're in and you. It just feels lacking. We take this shuttle to the Divine Observatory. This is the game's central hub, and it's actually quite busy. I have a look around, and I love the environmental design. The use of the vertical space with these spinning library-style walls of shelves, the towers above, the sight lines through to the area, the lovely colour palette clashing with itself. It's a beautiful area. We get a bit more plot. Basically, you're immortal. People pray to immortals to help them, so if you help them and more people pray to you, you become a god. And the more people believe in you, the more powerful you become. This is a clever, lore friendly way of explaining levels. It's your worshippers increasing in number because you've done stuff. Similar to Warframe, Skyforge has a central hub location and then all the missions take place in small instant zones accessed via the main map, and you open the map with K. There are nine main zones, and each zone has levels within it. There's even a narrative plotline actually marked on the map of the zones, so you're always sure where to go next to follow the main story. I love the fact that early game direction is given to the player, and I love the fact the storyline is actually shown on the map in a geographically consistent way. But this map screen feels so mobile gamey. It feels very tower defense level select on a Newgrounds game in the late 2000s. And Skyforge is full of these choices, these mobile choices. We'll see even more later. The main gameplay of Skyforge moment to moment is solid. It's in the mid to high quality PC game section, but the menus and the systems are just so mobile game feeling. First mission, we're off to Dankit Forest to help someone. Chat to this dude and... oh. Just a whole host of voice acting issues here. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't think I'd make it. Those creatures appeared out of nowhere. My whole... Notice how it just cut off at the end. Well, that happens all the time. It's another glaring example of the lack of polish on Skyforge. Oh, also, the big bad guy is called Thanatos. I'm not joking, Thanatos, the god of death. If you listen carefully, you can hear all the Disney lawyers working out if they can sue yet. 
Once an enemy has low health, you can press E to perform a more stylish kill. The Cryomancer just entombs them in a stalagmite, and you get all your combat energy back so you can use more special attacks. And now another issue which again feels mobile. Spacebar is a context button. It's jump, then it's also talk to NPCs, then collect items, then interact with items on the floor, then pick up a new weapon, then activate consoles. Spacebar is context sensitive, and in the chaos of an action game, you can be trying to pick something up or activate a console while actually spamming jump. The glory of a keyboard is you can keybind different keys to do different things. You don't need to bind all the interactions to a single key because you have multiple keys. The only reason you would do this is if you were limited on keys, like on a phone. And now we get this really weird first-person cutscene that's never happened before and doesn't happen ever again. So someone resurrected the boss and then powered him up, so we fight again. And it's great fun. Skyforge seems to excel at fights pitting the player against one or a small group of elite enemies. It allows the mechanics to shine, so we win. And the end screen shows us the rewards, and also the rewards we would have received if we were a paying premium member. Oh yeah, you gotta gently encourage the players to sub. To be fair, the premium features don't get pushed on you in the early game, which is nice. We report back and we learn the dude who teleported in and resurrected the boss is called the Grave Digger, so when he enters the battlefield, he can return target creature from the graveyard to his hand. I see. Now we meet a powerful goddess called Ayana, and my face does a weird twitchy thing. Just watch. I'm pretty sure my face has never done that. Oh, and also during this cutscene, the voiceover volume levels just vary wildly. Just listen, I've not altered this at all. I've been told that you had an encounter with the Gravedigger. We cannot underestimate this threat. The army of death on Aelion is weak and uncoordinated. And a strong leader? That will make it much more powerful. The entire planet is in danger. It is the duty of every immortal to help catch the Gravedigger, and we cannot rest until he has been captured. The well-being of Aelion is in our hands. Iana commended you. It is a good sign. Your journey started with luck, but that was only just... You may prove yourself with short missions alone or with a group, with whole regions, occupied by enemy forces, or with even competitions against other immortals. That's just another small issue in a long list of small issues that again isn't game-breaking but does make Skyforge appear artistically amateur. We're now told about the class quest temple accessed via the map scene. So I go to the map, click the temple, click quest list to advance my class and get some new skills and nothing happens. Wow. Okay, so to be able to click this button, you need to open the menu, try to click it, then close the menu and this completes the quest, making it clickable. Skyforge feels like a game with a really high budget and absolutely no quality assurance. Now we get a robotic companion, or ARC, which we can upgrade with Victor Medals to do extra stuff. Victor Medals are one of the many, many currencies the game has, which again, feels mobile gamey. We're now sent to Factory 501, where this dude 100% assures us that nothing is wrong and they just build totally safe military-grade combat robots, and then to absolutely no one's surprise, the robots all turn on and start attacking people. The factory layout, design, environmental ambience, both sound effects, music and lighting is top notch. This is a great map, and the tank boss is the first time I started really enjoying gameplay. Combat seems to have fixed any small bugs it has, and the responsiveness is there. These are the mechanics we need, mechanics you need to work around. This is a great fight. And after the fight I try some parkour, and we are back to being inconsistent. Some boxes can be jumped on, some can't, and there's no way to tell before you try. And now we fight a small group of enemies. And then we fight a tank, with a small group. Oh, that's good! This is progression! Enemy A, then enemy B, then enemy A and B together. Progressive overload of combat challenge. Good design right there. 
and then a main boss with even more mechanics, interacting with consoles while being attacked, fighting off mobs, overloading a shield, dodging incoming attacks. For all of Skyforge's flaws, the spectacle of the bosses and the mechanics of the boss fights are really good. Chat to a dude, get told the enemies are called the Reapers, make a mental note to drop Commander Shepard an email later, and then get back to the observatory, and now we discover the most mobilely looking interface yet. Pressing K opens the horizontal questline path, but also opens this screen. The city layout with the Tower of Knowledge. Look at this screen. Look at this and tell me what type of game this reminds you of, because to me, this is a time-gated mobile city builder. And to further that, the Tower of Knowledge is this building, and clicking on it gets us this screen, where we improve ourselves by spending currency, by clicking this button. There's no gameplay here. It's literally grind the game to get the currency to click this button so you get better. This is a mobile game. We're off to Oki Island next. The loading screen is a badass looking spider which I hope we get to fight. So I arrive, chat to some locals, and the voice acting seems to have stopped. Maybe it's for the best. More plot. We are told Zintara, Ayana's assistant, is hunting down the gravedigger and we need to go and help. Somehow. Oh, neat little combat display feature. Enemies have symbols above their heads showing the type of enemy that they are and the combat tactics they will use. Three dots are mobs and will swarm you. A dagger is a powerful DPS enemy, a shield is a tank, and a triangle is a support enemy such as a healer or a debuffer, so you know what to focus on. More bosses, this one adding an area denial mechanic with flames on the floor. We level up some more and gain a new skill, Whiteout. It's an AoE localized ice storm that absolutely wrecks low health enemies. While on this mission, I do try and explore the map for some secrets. I don't find any, but I do find some death. It seems that you are immortal, but you can't swim. I find a message transcoder. We play it and, oh, it seems that the voice acting is still there, but only certain characters. I haven't edited this. This is what the game looks like now. Take on another mini boss, and I can't overstate how fun the combat system actually is once it stops trying to be a crappy mobile system. Then we do our best Sherlock Holmes impression and investigate some blood. Hmm, yes, Watson. It seems there's just so much blood, and it's all being dragged that way. Maybe we should go that way. Sometimes you'll pass these creepy holes in scenery, and purple ghost hands will chase you and swipe at you, and the only way to beat them is to keep dodging until they go away. You know, if this is a well-designed level, now this mechanic has been established, it will hopefully be repeated in the boss room. And it is. And we fight the spider from the loading screen. And this is the first fight I'm actually chasing down the health orbs because there's a lot of unavoidable damage here. And then the goddess Ayana arrives and this voice acting, Christ, this, just listen, it is dire. I had to endure this, so you do too. Were you going to start without me? You'll be the only one dead today, although it's too bad you won't stay that way. Then I'll kill you both, and when you resurrect, I'll kill you again, and I'll keep doing it until you crawl away in shame. You shouldn't have underestimated me. Feel my wrath. I have no time for this, but one day I'll catch you off guard, and then you'll pay dearly for crossing me. Also a mistake I've only just noticed, the game doesn't know how it spells Zintara. The first time you see her name written down in text from earlier in the mission, it's spelt with an X. Now her nameplate has a Z. You do not know how to spell your own NPC's names. He wasn't joking. Now you have a powerful enemy. I suggest you start getting ready for that promised encounter. It's simple enough. Fight invaders, help mortals, and they will believe in you.
You couldn't have found a less expressive voice actor if you tried. That was truly awful. If you did the voice for this character, I don't mean to offend you, but how are you getting work? Back at the observatory, and we learn there's now been a temple built in our honour. This is another mobile scene style thing, and is a daily reward generator. Another mobile game system that increases our power while providing no gameplay. And now a really strange bug. I have lost the use of the M, I, O, P and K keys. I can still move with WASD, still jump and escape still works, but I cannot open the inventory or quest list or character sheet, and I've got no idea why. I have to actually go into keybinds and rebind them to get them working again. What a random bug. And uh, while we're here, let's have a look at the cash shop. You can become a premium member for 30 days for 9,000 diamonds, or Argents, and buying the diamonds is, yep, as I guessed, abusive pack sizes. Premium currency is sold in specifically awkwardly sized packages to be as mathematically manipulative as possible for the player. Whenever you want to buy, it will always be just out of reach of a pack, so you're encouraged to buy the next more expensive pack. This is not a consumer friendly practice and I hate it. It's also something mobile games do all the time. Look, you need 9,000, but you can buy 6,650 for 7 euros, or 12,025 for 12 euros. But if you buy the 12,000 pack, you're going to be 3,000 over. But the next thing in the shop is going to cost you 4,000, so you may as well buy the next pack up. I have a look around the shop, and the most expensive pack is 30,000 Argent Diamonds, and that gives you a class and a skin. And the cheapest way to get 30,000 is to buy the 50,000 pack for 45 euros. The shop is expensive, and as we'll discover later, actually sells stamina increasing items so you can grind more. Yet yeah, Skyforge is the world's prettiest, most graphically intensive mobile MMO just playable on PC. Next quest was sent to meet Marcus, another immortal who needs a hand with something. Find him, have a chat, and the game gets caught in a conversation hey, loop. Who are you? What brings you here? Ah, so it's you I've heard so many things about. I'm really happy to meet you. It's true. I'm interested in the Gravedigger. But it's a strange story. Here, I saw him as clearly as I see you now. I thought I was a dead man. Everything pointed to that. But then, instead of killing me, the Gravedigger asked for help. Though he didn't elaborate, he just let go of me and told me to run. Which is exactly what I did. There are other people who saw him... Hey, who are you? What brings you here? You see how it reset? Oh, so that happens twice before it plays out. all the way through. Really and now another you. mechanic. This boss can poison you, and to remove the poison you have to dodge. And this is great, because before dodging was a purely positioning tool. Now it's a debuff remover and you have to ration your dodges. Nice use of the mechanic. And here's a strange animation feature. Talking to any NPC starts with a moment of jiggle, as if the NPC has suddenly spawned in and their frame has been shaken. But with all the female models, this means all conversations start with boob jiggle. I'm not kidding, just watch. I'm here. Hey, I'm Sabrina. I'll be honest, I put that bit in so those of you watching on second monitors would hear the word jiggle and actually start paying attention again. If that was you, like and sub. This scientist tells us the organization dedicated to stopping any alien threats is called the Threat Neutralization Agency. Seriously? TNA. Oh no, some aliens! Better get the TNA out! More bosses and... Okay, the combat is fine. The environments are lovely. The music is top quality, but it's extremely linear. It's basically a one-player story game with multiplayer tacked on. If you ordered Warframe from Wish, you'd get Skyforge. More NPC voice acting and more terribly trimmed audio files. Listen, the sound guy has cut off the end of almost every single voice clip in this conversation. I'm glad to see someone besides the Phytonides here. When I get back, I'll stay off salad for a while. Skyforge feels like two games, like two teams of developers. One was making a linear action combat game, one was making a city builder time gated mobile game and they both got ordered to make an MMORPG and so decided just to smash together what they had. The bosses are fun, the wave defense mechanic is fine, the combat's great, but the bastion missions updating from the main quest storyline completion and the temple being upgraded through a mobile interface and the multitude of other mobile style currencies and systems all cheapen the overall feel of the game. 
Off to Factory 902 to stop more wild machines, and this opening fight is actually decent. Some decent mechanics, some healing, fights are getting more interactive, and I love it. The bosses in Skyforge are spectacles of lights and sounds and bright contrasting colour palettes of explosions and lasers, and Skyforge excels at this. It's a spectacle boss fighter. The boss fights are great. Everything connecting all the boss fights together, the terrible voice acting, the badly trimmed audio clips, the mobile interface and the abusive priced currency packs, they all feel cheap. New mechanic, you can pick up certain weapons and use them to fight. The game says they're super powerful, and they aren't. They have very limited uses, and your regular attacks are often better. We now meet an NPC I'm remembering as perverted Lord Flashheart, and I'm not playing his audio because he actually says he once saw the goddess Ayana's underwear, and if we wait a bit, he'll remember what colour it is. Yeah. Like Everything go? between the boss fights is bad. Pieces. These flying boss monsters are actually reminding me of Shaders from Otherland. Wonder if any of the development team worked on both games. It does seem a coincidence if they didn't. Next up is a giant Rubik's Cube boss, and I personally love this because I just have a soft spot for man versus strange geometric things. I love unknowable, impossible reforming machines. They just creep me out, and fighting them is something I find fascinating. The mechanics of the fight are good too. Big attacks, big spinny area attacks, ads getting spawned. I like the Rubik's Cube boss. This was fun. After killing it, I have the Warm Breeze event advertised at me. Looks like some kind of summer event, so you know what? I think I'm pretty satisfied with the combat so far, so let's go and try the event. I open up the quest menu, I go to the globe, I find the training. Let's do this. So it's some kind of skating thing. I'm doing the training and right, the collision detection on the mines seems a little bit off and the jump isn't super responsive. You press spacebar and then it either jumps right away or about a second later depending on how the game is feeling. You've got a load of mechanics here though, boosts, jumping, bombs, little UFOs that slow you down and then these goddamn boards which switch from green to purple and when they're purple you fall through them. This jump. This goddamn jump was harder than the rest of the game. I spent way too long trying to make this, but eventually, after several minutes of failing, I was a jumping machine. It's basically the hoverboard section from the first Ratchet and Clank game. It's not bad, it's just not necessary. But that was training, so let's queue up for a real race. And while I'm waiting, let's just read some reviews. Is it a good game? Once upon a time in a faraway land, yes, it would be, but not in the present. Combat system, decent. Visuals, stunning. User-friendly UI? <laughs> Maybe when you play the game upside down, you can keep it from spilling out all the sub-menus. Free to play? Oh, sure, if you call scavenging the bottom of the barrel free to play. Can it be played solo? If I was asked the same question three years from now, I'd have said, yes, you can. Now, you'll be lucky if you reach rank 30. Does it have a group finder? Yes. Does anyone ever think of using it? Nope. Is it pay to win? Yes, 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 and yes. I remember this game. The old progression system was a lot of fun. What made your game crap was the terrible mechanics of tedium and the infinite grinding of generic content. Love when devs are so incompetent they remove the best parts of their game and emphasize the worst parts. 
I've played this, meet new friends across the world, raid the dungeons and doing stupid things together. Doing Avatar, becoming Elder God, form a pantheon, ah, such sweet moment. I miss my old friends, I just write review today even though I stopped playing on 2018. Perhaps one of the worst MMORPGs I've ever had the mispleasure of playing. Disclaimer, it's fine if you like this game, I like it, but I'll still criticise it to hell. Don't let the beautiful graphics and good action combat fool you. This game was maliciously developed to make you feel frustrated in order to convince you to spend money. Due to an error on the game's behalf during checkout, I was charged three times for an item and only received one item. When contacted, they said it wasn't their fault and they would not refund the money. We'll not be purchasing anything from any of the games in the future, both on PC and mobile. Bad MMORPG, good beat em up. If you expect an MMORPG as advertised by the dev, don't bother. If you want a game like Warframe, maybe you'll like it, but it is clearly not an MMORPG as Skyforge claims to be in the official FAQs. There's no open world, you are given a mission, enter a small instant linear zone, kill all the monsters, kill the zone boss, claim the reward, then leave the zone. Repeat, and that's it. That's the game. There are a few zones where you'll be doing daily missions along with other players, or more like competing against other players in who's gonna tag them mobs. Oh, here's an interesting review. I typed in Skyforge mobile feel to Google and got this Reddit thread. Progressing feels like a mobile game, so it's not just me. 20 minutes later, the PvP version of the hoverboard racing still hasn't started. I guess that tells us all we need to know about the popularity of this event, or the player base, one or the other. I head back to the training hall to see if I can try some of the elite classes, maybe give me a taste, see if I want to buy them, and no, the character models are gone, replaced with enemies. You can't try the premium classes for free. That's actually a real shame. More questing, more fantastic voice acting. Behold, this man's voice acting. You knew Nora too? Of course, of course. Immortals don't care about us simple folk. But Laertes was different. The true hero of this land. He's gone. The fact they got the one word in the subtitles wrong for that exclaimed point made me laugh way more than it had any right to. I also like how this guy's just jammed his whole arm through his crotch. That's, uh... That's dominance right there. This enemy poisons you and causes death. Its name? Death Poisoner. I guess it was let your child name the enemy's day. I've killed a boss and now there's a giant invisible wall preventing me from leaving without talking to an NPC, but I'm rather entertained watching this soldier fight off this attacking insect with what looks like mild annoyance. Also, invisible walls? Really? Come on, you're better than this. Oh, there's fashion and costumes, and to continue the terror comparison, you can just wear a suit. I mean, what god wouldn't wear a suit if they had the choice? The enemy design in this city is actually fantastic. The insects carrying the bodies of soldiers and then attacking you with the bodies and the soldiers' weapons is disturbing, and I love it. By now, I feel I've got a pretty good grasp of what Skyforge is. It's discount Warframe with mobile-looking interfaces, laughably bad voice acting, and mini-games that no one plays, but I'm going to keep going and see if it has any more surprises for me. And, amazingly, it does. I fight some spider bosses, liberate some cities, then go to a prison to stop a riot, and this is where the difficulty ramps up. Honestly, the difficulty curve so far has been nice. It started too low and had just found a nice, comfortable middle, but here, it becomes a wall. These two basic enemies give me more trouble than any previous boss. And this enemy actually fires an electrical arrow cordon and traps you in it. The enemy now have crowd control against you. And this is the first time I die. Okay, challenge. I like this. Let's do this. This is a really, really good boss fight. The prison section is the moment the solo game, provided you want challenge, becomes fun. It's possible, but punishing. You need to actually use your abilities, and suddenly the hit point orbs become actual lifesavers. A bit more plot. The prisoners feel abandoned by the regular gods and have turned to the gravedigger because he listens to them and treats them like human beings, so now we have some moral ambiguity in there. Nice touch. The jail really shows what Skyforge can do well. Fantastic boss fights, but time-consuming mob fights. The tank enemies in the jail are just 
damage sponges. They're probably just a DPS check. It is possible but repetitive to win, and taking down these groups takes a while, with a lot of backtracking. But the bosses, are oh, they shine. The clash of enemy flame sorcerer and my cryomancer melding into this lovely juxtaposition of fire versus ice. Red and blue particle effects filling the arena, mechanics, dodging, healing, charging, blocking, absorbing. This is a beautiful fight. I'm almost sad the Gravedigger appears at the end and teleports the dude away. I hoped this fight would last longer and we'd see an actual winner. With the Jail Riot sorted, I want to explore some of the sights of the main city, so I take a Sky Taxi over to the park. This is one of those fluff areas in MMOs that players don't go to because there's no actual content here, but they look nice, and for me that's enough. I love nice looking areas. It adds to the character of the game and the world's history. But then I bump into this, a conversation between two guys and a girl. But both guys are voiced by the same voice actor and he's not even trying to do a different voice. This is a joke. Have a listen to this. How do you like being a test subject? Does your head hurt? It's fine if I don't move it too fast. The white coat said it should pass soon. How long did you last? My personal record? Four seconds. Am I missing something here? Didn't I tell you? I received a letter from the lab of some pantheon a while ago. They researched the effects of hypnosis on mortals. It's one of their key areas of research now. The Gargonite invasion you see. And what was in the letter? They needed people with high intelligence quotient, and I was offered to take part in the research. Oh, experiments. They said they got some interesting data. Hopefully it will help them. At least the view from the end of the park is just stunning. Skyforge is a nice combat system with some lovely graphics and actually really engaging boss fights featuring various mechanics and challenging encounters held back by a general lack of polish mostly in the audio and subtitles and really, really brought down by its similarities to exploitative mobile games with both menu layouts and cash shop premium package deals. It's not a low quality gameplay experience by many standards, but it's not polished to the standard it needs to be to compete in the competitive MMORPG world. It's the store's own brand of cereal. It's not bad, it's just not as good as the rest. So to finish the review, I will award Skyforge Warframe ordered from Wish out of 10. Thank you for watching. Another massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. You can support from only a pound a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and our Discord. And as always, have a great day.